Hello. Okay. Hello, everybody. Sorry about um, I'm late. Sorry about that. Uh, I couldn't uh, figure out how it was working. Um, Facebook did uh, something and it changes something and I didn't know how to fix that. So sorry about that. Um, I'm here now. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm, my name is Roman. I'm a teacher at Centre Zenit. Centre Zenit is a French learning school, is a language school uh, in Paris. And uh, we do some live sometimes. It's my fourth one, I think. Uh, and I still don't know how it works. So <laughs> uh, one day, I hope. So today I want to um, give you some tips, tips to learn French, not really to learn French, but more to um, practice French. Are you going to sing? Hello, Pavel. I'm not going to sing. No, uh, I'm going to give you some tips to practice your French, to learn better your French, um, because I'm a French teacher. Okay, not a singer, <laughs> really not. Um, so, uh, first thing, uh, I'm not just saying that, but the first, the first thing uh, to do if you want to learn French is to take a class. I know I'm a French teacher, so obviously uh, I'm pro class but it's still really uh, important for you. French can be a really complicated language, especially with grammar. Uh, and it's easier for you if you learn it with the basics, grammar basics. It's way easier than to be able to speak French and I guess less frustrating, uh, maybe. So take a class. Um, Centre Zenit offers really good class. We are a school, um, so in the center of Paris, right now it's confinement. So we've been doing classes on, on uh, online. It's working, it's quite nice. Um, so you can join us. It's 330 euros for 40, 45 hours, which is really, really cheap co uh, compared to other schools. Um, hello, I thought you are, were going to bring out a ukulele, like how you said, Pavel, with the French accent. <laughs> um, no, no ukulele. <laughs> um, donc, les, uh, Centre Zenit is a really good school, obviously, uh, but taking a class is important as well, even if it's not with us. Um, any online training? Online training um, as online classes? online school. Yes, uh, we are doing online classes with Zoom right now uh, because we cannot meet each other. And actually we are at least uh, co continuing with that until at least beginning of June, I guess, uh, because it's safer and we don't have to take um, the subway and public transportation. So for now, online classes, it's actually really nice uh, being in a class and just being on your couch, why not, right? It's It has its uh, nice thing. Like you can just go to your class two minutes before time. Quite nice. Anyway, so today is not about Centre Zenit only. It's about tips to practice your French. How to do that? Uh, when you are taking a class, it's not enough, okay? Taking a class is step one. But then you need to get involved in your work, involved in uh, your learning. Okay, you need to um, work on your own as well, not just doing the homework that the teachers gave you. Give you. Uh, I wish I had something like this for German. I am learning since I live there. All the best with your course. Thank you. Uh, German can is really difficult for grammar as well, so it can be important to, to have a class as well and to have tips to practice because learning a language, even if you have the theory, it's not enough. You still need practice. So that's what I'm trying to give you right now. So get involved in your work and be interested in learning French because uh, French is not, it, I mean, it's a 
tool, yes, to, to be able to live in France, but it's also a really nice language, I, I, I think. <laughs> uh, I'm not that objective, but still. Um, so be interesting in learning French and you can watch uh, TV shows, for instance, TV shows or TV. Uh, yes, to practice daily, exactly. So be interested, like uh, you can watch TV shows. We have some nice TV shows in France. Um, for instance, if you have a Netflix, um, Netflix account, there is a whole category in movies and in TV shows. You have the French category. So it can be really nice to discover new TV shows. Even if you don't have an account, you, you can just check on another one, I guess, and then go on another website, which I'm not going to give you uh, right now. But it's possible as well to find some TV shows. We have some really short ones that are um, about daily life. Like a really famous one is called Inga et une fille. Uh, Inga et une fille is about a couple, d'accord? And it's like their everyday life. So it's situation of every day. Like sometimes they are going to the cinema, they are going to do their grocery shopping, and it's a little sketch, sketch. Like it's supposed to be funny. It is funny for French. I guess it's not funny maybe for everybody. Uh, I like it. It's not that uh, young now. It's kind of old. I was watching that when I was a, children, a child. Um, so not that old. But uh, it's quite nice for the vocabulary, actually, because they use everyday life vocabulary. Even if they are talking in franc, usually, which is the money before euro. <laughs> That's the only thing that is quite old now. Um, so, Anga and Fee, if you want something more uh, today, more less old, I guess, uh, you have Fais pas ci, Fais pas ça, which is same. It's like a small TV show that talks about uh, family. Okay, it's a situation in a family and it's it's um, it's funny sometimes <laughs> if you like this kind of humor. Uh, some people say that it's the um, modern family of friends. Not, I'm not totally. Uh, I don't totally agree with that, but still. Um, hello, are you located in Toulouse? Uh, no, I. We are not. Sorry, I am not. It's in Paris. Centre Zenith is in Paris, but for online classes, you can be from everywhere, I guess. Um, donc, uh, yes, fais pas ci, fais pas ça. Or we have also a really short TV show, which is called Bref. which is kind of funny as well. And you can have a little explanation of your uh, life in Paris as well, because it's the story of a Parisian. And he's trying to explain um, how he struggle in life. So it's really short. Uh, this, though, is a bit more complicated than the other because he speaks really, really, really fast. Um, so maybe you could put the subtitles uh, at first. Uh, but it's interesting. If you are afraid to watch TV shows, French TV shows, maybe because you don't think you're going to like it. Uh, true, humor can be difficult to understand in another language. So maybe you, you, you could watch movies that you already know and you could watch them in French because French actually like to translate everything. So we have French version of every movie. Uh, so every download, like uh, Amazon, Amazon Prime Video or Netflix, you can find the French version of every movie. So for instance, if you like Harry Potter, I don't know if it's your favorite movie, you could watch it in French. Why not? Um, which translation is good to learn by self? By self. Um, sorry, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, which translation is good to learn by yourself? You mean like uh, you want a translation to learn French on your own? Uh, because it can be really complicated. Uh, translation is not here to teach you, okay? It's not for you to learn, it's more for you to practice and to get used to listening French, to listening uh, French accents, uh, to listen um, French vocabulary as well. So um, it's not like you, you cannot just learn the language by listening. It's not enough. 
because then you will not be able to do it. But it can be a nice add to, okay. It can be um, something more uh, with your classes, okay? If you need to practice, because in class you can hear your teacher all the time, but we have an accent, we have our expression and you need to hear more. So TV shows can be nice for that. Reverso, okay. Um, Google Translate works, actually. Um, but my advice when you use translation, I will add this in my um, thing. Actually, it's a good point. My advice when you use uh, translation, it's to use it in only one word. Like, uh, usually we like to, to put a full sentence and use the translation. Unfortunately, it does not work all the time. It can work, right? Uh, sometimes it's perfect, especially French and English. I mean, uh, it's really well done. And it was really worked on that because many people asked for it. But eh, the context uh, is not always understood. And it's kind of a really literal translation. OK, it's like words keep the same order and it does not always work in French, especially because uh, learning a new language is also learning a way of thinking. So French and English don't always perfectly translate because we don't exactly think the same. So the expression will be different and that's why translation will not work all the time. Uh, so my advice is to find your word, actually. Trying, try to write your sentence on your own, but just find only one word. So for instance, you want to say smart, you are not sure how to say that, you, you um, type smart, okay, and then you will have usually several translations. For instance, you talked about reverso. Reverso often gives you several translations. So then you could find the best one um, con on your context. You could find for an adjective or a noun, something like this. So that's my advice. Try to write on your own, but then uh, find only one word in your translation and it's important to know that the world will not for instance if you're looking for a verb the verb is not going to be uh, conjugated so it's up to you to conjugate it or if you're looking for an adjective it's going to be the masculine singular form uh, up to you to change it if you're talking about a female something or or plural okay so that's a nice exercise as well um, so that's for translation. Of course, you can use it, but be careful with that. That's it. Um, so TV shows, movies that you already know that you can look in French, that, that you can watch in French, sorry, and French with French subtitles. That's the best. Why is that? Because if you just listen to it in French and read the subtitles in English, you will not be um, focused on what they are saying. You will just be focused on reading everything. So that's why I'm saying French, um, French version with French subtitles, so that if it's too complicated to understand, because sometimes they speak fast or they have an accent, you can read the words, so it's easier. And you can actually understand what, how it's pronounced, stuff like this. So it's nice. And it's easier if you already know the movie so that you're not stressed about not understanding. Uh, usually it's really frustrating not to understand everything in a movie. I mean, we watch a movie to understand it, right? So that's why I'm uh, advising you to watch a movie you already know. Uh, I have tried to learn by watching movies, but I was not satisfied. Do you think that this is the best idea? I couldn't understand as they speak fast. Yes, that's the problem with movies and TV shows. People speak fast because they speak naturally. Okay, uh, that's why I'm saying subtitles. That's why I'm advising subtitles. Without the subtitles, it's kind of mm, too cruel. Um, so put the subtitles, but in French. That's it. Uh, do we have weekend class online? Uh, right now, yes, we have some classes that are in during the weekend. It's possible. Um, actually, we work as well on um, demands. Uh, so don't hesitate to ask Sourav. Sourav is our um, is the owner of Centre Zenith. So 
it should be on this page actually. Uh, you could ask Sura for, um, for questions, like uh, uh, if we have weekend classes and stuff like this. And if we have a lot of demands, maybe we could arrange something. Okay? We are working like this for now. Um, it's confinement, so it's a weird time. Uh, so don't hesitate to ask um, if you need something. Even if you're not sure, we will answer positively. Okay? Um, so that's for movies, um, but you're welcome. <laughs> I have taken a comic book from a library and I translated it on Reverso. What do you think about it? Hello, Ruit. Ruit, sorry for my accent. Um, I think it's nice to have taken a comic book. It's the first step. Good for you. Uh, comic books are, are really um, important in France. So I don't know what comic book did you find. Is it uh, a French one, maybe? Um, though I'm, I disagree with the reverso. If you put everything on the reverso, if you try to translate everything, uh, everything will be lost in translation. This expression works for this. It's actually um, true. I mean, we cannot completely translate a full book or a full um, comic book. If it was that easy, I guess the job translator would not exist. So um, try to use some words, okay? Sometimes you can try to understand the context, okay? And comic book can be really good for that because you have pictures, so that's nice. Uh, you can try to understand on your own and then if you have some words that are really complicated don't hesitate to uh, translate them but not the full sentences just some words okay sometimes you can have actually several meaning for only one word so that's good because then you can try to understand with your context okay uh, that's my advice for um, for reading and using uh, reverso or Google Translate, okay? The whole book, if it's the whole book, you first you're going to be really frustrating because you're going to lose everything in translation. And uh, second, you will, it's, I mean, it's long. Uh, it's a really long time to write everything uh, in your reverso. So find some vocabulary, something that is really difficult. If, oh, sorry. If um, if the book is too difficult, okay, there are some books that exist that are made for people that are learning a language, okay. I actually wrote about a collection. It's called Lire en Français Facile. It's from Hachette, I think. Yes, uh, it's actually made for um, you, made for people that uh, don't speak French yet but are learning French. So you have several levels, okay? You can buy a book for A1 level, for instance, and then you, the, um, the higher level is B1 or B2, sorry, B2. So you have books from A1 to B2. So that, that can be really nice to start reading because your, the vocabulary and everything is for you, is made for you. It means that, it does not mean that you will understand everything, but at least you will understand most of them and you'll be able to understand the context. Because when you learn French, we learn it by step. Okay, so A1, A2, we'll, we learn about vocabulary, like daily life vocabulary. So if you have a book about, I don't know, like science fiction, it's going to be really difficult for the vocabulary. Okay, so step by step. Um, and don't use too much reverse. That's my advice. Uh, uh, da -da -da, French one. May I know the timing and fee for the weekend classes? So, okay. Sourav uh, is answering. Thank you. Can you please spell out the TV series you mentioned? Thank you. Yes, of course. I mentioned un gars et une fille. Uh, I mentioned fait pas si and this is another one and the last one was bref um, I like bref thank you so much for your quick reply and I want to start A1 um, okay okay sorry about that 
So I will continue then on my tips. Uh, I was talking about reading actually, actually. So as I told you, you have some books that are made for you, made for learning French by reading. So that can be nice to use. Uh, it's called Lire en Français Facile. And you have A1 to B2. So it's up to you to find your own level. Uh, you have tests. Uh, you can go to schools as well and we can test you to have your level and then find a book on for you. OK? Uh, do you only use DU in quantities and while using some? Do you? Ah, du. Uh, du, ah, du is actually complicated. Uh, du is not only for quantities. It's actually for unknown quantities like some sugar, du sucre, but actually it's the contraction of de plus le, du. Uh, like this, without a full grammar lesson, it will be, it, it won't be really interesting. So um, I will go on on my tips, sorry about that. You are welcome to ask as many questions as you want. It's just that um, it's too complicated to start a, a, a grammar lesson right now. Um, Please explain the difference between en and dans. Wow, you like uh, <laughs> grammar. Um, so both are preposition, okay? Uh, but en actually does not mean inside. Dans does mean inside. So that's the difference. Uh, both can be translated by in in English, though, because in English, in has the meaning of inside and just in. So en is, will be used in front of countries, for instance. Uh, je vais en Espagne, I'm going to Spain, or je vis en Espagne, je, I live in Spain. But en, um, in, uh, sorry, dans, it has the meaning inside. Okay, so um, I'm in my house, je suis dans ma maison. Okay, but really with the meaning of inside, that's the difference. Uh, please mention some interesting TV web series for beginner intermediate level. The TV shows I mentioned first, so Bref, Un Guy and Fille, and uh, Fais pas si, Fais pas ça, are really short. So it can be really interesting for learning because then you don't have, you know, like a full episode of 40 minutes. It's just like um, five minutes top, max, sorry. Um, web series uh, like this, uh, Bref. Bref, uh, was a web series at first, and then it went on uh, TV. Uh, it's nice for intermediate level because of vocabulary, but you, it's difficult because of the, um, the, the guy speaks really fast. So put the subtitles at first, and then uh, take off the subtitles just to, to see if you're, if you're able to understand the fast speaking. Okay, so that can be nice um, to you to, to watch Bref. Uh, intermediate level for other TV shows. Um, you can watch serious TV show as well because intermediate level, you, you have some vocabulary for that. Why not uh, Marseille? Marseille was a serious TV show. I think it was nice. Sorry, I didn't watch it though. Um, but uh, we had some uh, good review you can again you can check on internet on the internet i guess or on the netflix account if you have for tv shows and um movie in french french tv shows and movie actually because if i'm giving some um some some uh it's be, um it won't be for you exactly okay so you need to check with your taste it's important to watch something that you will like, okay? Even if you're not able to understand everything, it's important to like it and not forcing you to uh, watch something that you will hate, okay? So check your taste and look at something you like. It's important. Because if you don't like it, you will think that you don't like French, but it's not true, okay? We have several uh, stuff. We have drama, we have... Um, police thing, uh, we have um, comedy, etc. Everything. So please check. The three I gave, Francais, uh, sorry, Fais pas si, fais pas ça, Bref, and Un gars, une fille are all comedy. So if you don't 
like really comedy, uh, check others, okay? I cannot give you everything because too many stuff. Uh, so check on your test, okay? Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Donc, um, ça c'est pour les livres. So read. Uh, you can read the newspaper as well. Newspaper is nice. Ah, hello Arty. <laughs> um, newspapers can be really nice. And my advice is uh, to read easy newspaper at first, at least. For instance, uh, we have some children newspaper. So the news are the same, but the vocabulary is really easier. So it can be nice to start. Uh, for instance, do, do not start with Le Monde. Le Monde can be really difficult to understand. Sentences can be really long. So check uh, children newspaper or uh, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, nice as well. Alors. Bonjour, I have a major confusion when the French use comment. Par exemple, when I am speaking to someone and they are not understanding, they say comment. Why? What does it mean? I always thought comment was how. It is a synonym for je ne... Uh, comment was how? I don't know. For je n'ai pas compris. Um, actually, comment can be used in the meaning of pardon as well. Sorry, I didn't understand. Comment? Uh, comment here is the polite way of saying quoi, of saying what, okay? Usually we, we teach children actually not to say quoi, not to ask when you don't understand, not to ask what. I think in English it's the same, you don't say like what? It, it's kind of uh, not polite. So the polite way of saying what in French is comment, when you don't understand a statement. So it's in the meaning... I don't understand. Je n'ai pas compris, indeed. But comment also means how in another context. Yes. So uh, comment and what can be synonym in this context, but not in another one. Okay? Is it clear? Um, hey, Latika! Hello! <laughs> Sorry. Um, difference between braquet and braque. Uh, the first one does not exist. Brac, braques with this accent, it does not exist. If you mean braque, um, braque, I will need a context, please. Because um, if you're talking about driving, braque can be like station, uh, finding a spot or something like turning your wheel uh, in the other way full other way sorry i'm really bad at driving um but braquet can also mean um steal a bank so i really need a context <laughs> to answer this question waiting for the context i can go on with my newspaper yes i was done actually with newspaper now i wanted to say that you could Uh, go to the museum. Right now, I don't know exactly when it's going to be open again. So I guess my tips is for later. Um, but go to museums, go to cultural events, and actually you could check um, on your city city hall, yes, um, your city mairie, okay, la mairie de votre ville, because we they actually plan a lot of cultural events and it can be really interesting to learn French, to be involved in your cultural um, event city, like. <laughs> um, yes, so um, cultural events, uh, museum, and I, I want to add something, sorry. Oh yeah, libraries. Libraries are actually nice and they, they organize some stuff sometimes like read, reading something and if you don't like events you can just go in your library and check some books you know there are some books nice right um alors okay context let me check braqué ses yeux gris braqué sur moi okay um when you are using braqué in this sentence ses yeux gris braqué it means that the The eyes are staring at you, actually. She's staring at you. So the eyes are on you. That's the meaning of braquet here. Um, 
the root of bracket, though it will be really complicated, but bracket can be used for many uh, meaning, as I said, driving, uh, eyes on you, or I guess it's the same meaning as stealing a bank, because we actually watch something really closely, a bank or you. <laughs> Um, bonsoir. Is there any online self-learning website to prepare myself for DELF exam different levels? Uh, yes, I'm sure it exists. Uh, any online self-learning? So, obviously, as a French teacher, I won't advise you to do uh, self-learning, but then it depends completely on you. Some people uh, can learn on their own. Sorry, and some people have difficulties for that. So it depends on you. It depends as well on your dedication. Dedication, yeah. Uh, you need to be really focused to learn on your own French because, as I said, the grammar in French can be really complicated. Uh, though I won't know any self-learning um, website because it's kind of my um, competition, I guess. Um, but I know some books and I will advise you some books, for instance, uh, Grammaire Progressive de l'Anglais, uh, to learn about grammar on your own. It's the only thing I know. It's a book. And you have lesson and exercise on the, on the side. So it can be nice. Again, it won't be enough. So you need more. Like, uh, because Delph is actually communicating. So, um, just learn on a website won't be enough. You need grammar, you need, um, because Delph is four, uh, four parts. You have comprehension uh, écrite, so understanding the, the reading. Uh, you have listening, you have talking, and you have writing. So, that's why the online is complicated, especially for the oral skills. My opinion, though. Ses yeux gris braqués sur moi, again. <laughs> Collins Dictionary on web. Um, oh, okay, you find this example in... Um... But was it your first question? Because at first you asked me the difference between braque and braqué. So I'm actually not sure if I understand. Um, if it was only braqué with the accent and braque without the accent, actually, it's the same word, uh, same meaning, but it's not the same form, grammatical form, okay? In French, verbs can change a lot. Actually, it's the same as in English. So braqué like this is a past participle, uh, if you know. And braque without the accent is the verb uh, present tense. So that's the difference. Uh, for self-learning grammar with examples. Ah, oh, you mean Colin? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Colin Dictionary. Uh, okay, I don't know this one. I never checked, so maybe. Um, it was in the comic I read. Okay, nice, nice comic though. Uh, yes. So Brack can Bracke can be really difficult to find on um, on translation. Uh, so maybe. You need to find the context. Maybe uh, she was watching you. Enfin, she was staring at somebody. Uh, braqué. Yeah, some expression like this are really weird to find. Um, but good comic. So, um, what about where, 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 where? <laughs> where was I? Um, do, 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 do. Les livres, yes. Uh, websites, yes. Website as well. So. I'm not advising you to learn French on your own and on a website, because I think it's not enough, but it can be nice to practice and to learn new vocabulary, actually, to be you know, a complement of your classes. For instance, you have some Instagram groups where you learn a new word every day, for instance. So every day they are telling you a new word and you need to, well, learn it. So that can be nice. Um, you have some app as well. For the apps, though, I will be really careful. You need to be really careful because sometimes uh, you have some mistakes. You can find mistakes because everybody can do it. Everybody can create it. So sometimes you find some mistakes. So be careful. And if you're not sure about something or if your teacher said the opposite, check with her or with him. Uh, 
double check, okay? Teacher can be wrong, um, but double check just to be sure, okay? And ask for an explanation. So that's the thing. Uh, what is the difference between bijouterie and joaillerie? Both sell jewels, right? Yes, actually, yeah, absolutely. Bijouterie is the official French um, French uh, word. Bijouterie can be every jewels. Joaillerie, though, it's with um, you know, like diamond, topaz, um, emerald, sapphire, all of those which are called uh, in French pierre précieuse, uh, stones, yeah, something like this. Uh, joaillerie is the work on those stones. So that's the difference. Both sell jewels though, and you can find some gold uh, bracelets in a joaillerie, but their specialty is stones and precious stones like emerald, sapphire, etc. A small question, is it required for any person to learn grammar to have communication? Yes, unfortunately it is re required, I think. Um, not every grammar, okay? We have some level, okay? A1 to C2, actually. You don't need C2 grammar to be able to communicate. Uh, you don't need the whole grammar because then you will be uh, research people, uh, you will write a thesis in grammar, and that's not the point to communicate. But the basics, like conjugaison, uh, les temps, uh, so present, past, future, all of those, it's not as easy as in English. So you need the basic grammar to be able to communicate, because without that, people will not be able to understand you, unfortunately. Uh, if you don't have basic grammar, uh, grammar can be as well the order of words, or it can be conjugaison, or it can be articles, you know, the little words we put in front of nouns in French. Without that, people will have really big difficulties to understand you. So that's why, that's why I'm saying that grammar is required, but not the whole deal, okay? Just the thing you, you need to be understood, okay? Uh, that's my opinion, so I think grammar at least until B1, B2, and then, yeah, good. Hi, hi, Gorango. Uh, why should I hear you? What's your topic you are discussing now? Okay, well, if you don't want, uh, sorry for you. Uh, she is one of the French teachers of Centre Zenith. Uh, yes, I am. This is a problem with chips. Uh, you could get, okay. okay, so I will continue then. Um, I was so talking about Instagram groups and my other point is actually make friends. Uh, how to, how getting easy to speak French? How uh, making it interesting actually? Because right now we talked about grammar and grammar is kind of lame <laughs> sometimes. I guess I disagree with that obviously because I'm a French teacher, but I mean, grammar is annoying. So the point is to communicate. And yes, it's required to have a little base in grammar, but it's important as well to have vocabulary and just to, you know, um, have fun <laughs> uh, using the language. So make friends, make French friends, or at least francophone friends, um, if you don't like French people. Uh, we have francophone people for, from other countries as well, Belgium, Switzerland, Canada even. So make friends, or more, up to you, um, and practice with them. Practice makes perfect. So go out and try to speak French. And if at first speaking French it's too com is too complicated, speak like Franklish, kind of a mix. If you have a word that is missing, just say it in English in the middle of your sentence. It's okay uh, at first, but try. Um, alors. Well, then currently I'm learning three types of communication, namely current, familiar, and soutenu. So how about this one? Yes, um, in French, in uh, usually in many languages, there are, we put them in three types of uh, communication. 
the first one, courant, the current one is the one we use all the time, the standard vocabulary. So it means the one you can use with your friends, but with uh, people you don't know as well. Then you have the familiar one, familiar as it nouns. Uh, it's called familiar because you use this only with your friends or with your family. You cannot use this in a job interview or uh, with your boss. No, except if your boss is nice. Um, and the last one, soutenu, is the one you use actually with your boss or in a really formal situation. That's the difference. And it's important indeed when you learn a language because sometimes you will see a word like une bagnole, une bagnole which means a car, but only in a familiar, um, a familiar way. So that's why it's important to know when you learn a new word to know where you can put it. Can I use it in, with my family? Uh, can I use it with my boss? Just to be sure. So yes, that's interesting. Uh, it's, not, um, it's not the whole thing though, and you don't need to learn every um, version of words, okay? Some, for instance, you have a um, different way of saying a car. My advice is to find the standard one, the courant, and stick to this, okay? because this can be used with many people, many situations, in many situations. If you are trying to learn every word in every uh, category of language, it's going to be really difficult and we, you will have too many words in your vocabulary. So standard can be enough. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Hi, what's the best way to speak French without living in France? Best way, uh, there are some websites that exist to meet people from other countries and to speak with them. And I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the app, but there is an app, it's really good. I can't remember, I have a blank right now, sorry. Um, maybe if you uh, look on, uh, on the internet for a website to communicate with people from other country, um, you can actually speak with people and their own, their whole uh, purpose is actually to practice a language. So you have, for instance, people in, I don't know, like uh, uh, I met people in Indonesia and they wanted to practice their French. So they were on this website and they were speaking to uh, people from Quebec or people from Belgium, actually. And you can learn many, many things. And it's really, really cool because you don't need to leave your country. You can even call them if uh, you, you're getting friends. Uh, if you don't like the person, though, you don't need to continue speaking with them. Many people are connected, so you can find many friends. And it's actually a good concept. So sorry about my blank. I can't remember the name of the app. Uh, but as soon as I remember, if I remember before the end of this, um, this live, I will tell you. If I don't, uh, I can find it after and uh, write it on this on this group okay sorry about that uh alors other question hi to ask other speaker politely to speak slowly to understand better i have faced a couple of situations like this a lot of times um how to ask well you can ask uh first you need to start with excusez moi because French, you know, you need to be polite, it's important. Uh, donc, excusez-moi, um, est-ce que vous pouvez parler plus doucement? Alors, ex I will write that. Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous, on va pouvez-vous parler plus lentement, s'il vous plaît? Lentement means slowly. Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous parler plus lentement, s'il vous plaît? Uh, the literal translation is, uh, excuse me, uh, can you speak slowly, please? Uh, and that's enough. If you don't remember the, the sentence, you can actually just say, excusez-moi, lentement, and that's it. That's enough, okay? If you don't remember. But you need to say, excusez-moi. People can be really... Uh, really focused on polite, polite sentence. Um, hello, I believe was one in my questions. Apology. Okay, thank you. 
Does hearing radio tunes one's ear towards the French pronunciation? One's ear towards the French? As I have a major problem understanding announcement in train stations, telephonic conversation when the other person speaks fast. Um, yes, uh, especially with the sound, sometimes it's not that good. So it's really complicated to speak fast and the sound is not perfect. Um, yes, I guess make, uh, getting used to it so you can um, find audio on, um, on the internet or radio just to be used to hearing announcement or hearing, um, hearing French, hearing people speak fast in French, uh, watching TV show, listening to the radio, all of that is nice to, to practice and to be used to hearing French, uh, hearing French. Uh, I keep hearing RFE, Ooh, interesting. Uh, there are many exercises on YouTube for A1 special announcements. Oh, nice, okay, interesting. So you can find some announcement on YouTube to practice, nice. Uh, you also have um, um, websites for FLE. If you look for FLE, F-L-E, it's actually French for foreigners, Français, uh, langue étrangère. So um, you can find many exercises. Sometimes it's for teacher, so be careful about that. But sometimes it's for you. You have some phonetics ex exercise as well for practice. That can be nice. Uh, tandem, yeah, that's the one. Thank you. Ah, perfect. Tandem is the, the app for um, uh, meeting people from other country, from other nationalities that want to practice a language. Sometimes you can even exchange, like you want to practice your French and the French people want to practice their English. So you can do an exchange. It's quite nice. Thank you. Well, okay. Uh, I've learned most of the grammar manage my internship with the emails in French, but I lack confidence in being able to speak. What should I do? Um, actually, in every language, the first step is often writing and then you need to speak because speaking goes really fast uh it's really difficult and you need to actually uh not be afraid of doing mistakes for instance when i speak english right now i am sure i do a lot of mistakes but you still understand me so the most important uh, thing about speaking about communicating is to be understood so if your grammar is not perfect and if your accent is not perfect if your pronunciation is not perfect we don't care the most important thing is to be understood. So try, don't be afraid, and you'll see it's going. It's actually not that uh, complicated if you are not too focused on your mistakes. Um, but if uh, actually the best way of um, not being afraid is to practice. So I was actually saying that because I told you to meet some friends um, to practice. But there are some um, meetings, like organized meetings that exist. I know some in Paris, for instance, you have a conversation group in Beaubourg, or you have a group that is called Polyglot in denfer rochereau If you don't live in Paris, you can also use Meetup. I don't know if you know this app. It's quite um, famous now, Meetup. It's people that create groups, uh, meetings in uh, with an objective. For instance, it can be play football or play basketball, or it can be speaking, speaking French, for instance, because you have many foreigners actually that want to practice their French. So you could try a meetup um, without anybody that you know, so you don't need to be afraid, uh, just to practice. And here you will find other people that are in the same case as you. So you won't be shy, maybe less shy at least. And if you're really, really too shy, you can babysit, babysit French children. Why is that? Because it's way easier to, well, not easier. It's uh, less stressful actually to speak to, to children because they don't care about your accent. They don't care about uh, what you're saying. They just want to understand you. So even if you say one word, they will try to understand you. And they are quite uh, good at that, actually, because they rely a lot on emotions and context and facial expression. 
So that's a really good practice, um, children, French children. And they will uh, teach you a lot as well, a, a lot of new words. Um, and they are not shy usually. <laughs> and they can be really mean though. <laughs> um, like, oh, you're so stupid, you don't know that. But they are so cute. <laughs> so why not this? It's a nice exercise uh, if you're really too shy. But meetup is nice as well. Or tandem, now that you know tandem. Um, you don't need to write, so you can find somebody on tandem and ask them to uh, make a phone call, for instance. Phone, though, is more complicated because you don't have facial expression. Voilà. Uh, tu, 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 Duolingo. App name is Duolingo. Uh, Duolingo is an app to learn uh, language. It's not a, an app to meet people, no? Uh, so, and this was my sentence. Oui, vous avez raison, parce que moi, maintenant, pratiquante avec courant et familière avec mon collègue, mais soutenue est vraiment difficile. Je ne sais pas que comment j'ai progrès avec ça. Um, alors, avoir raison, it's to have reason, not to be reason. Weird, I know. But um, yes, you don't need soutenue. You don't need... Um, actually, some French don't even know how to speak soutenue. So you don't need it, okay? The standard is way... Uh, is enough. Completely enough. Uh, thanks for saving my life. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I understand the French, but I am not able to give a reply. Yes, uh, usually it's the first step, you understand, but it's more difficult to answer. It's okay. Uh, understanding it's, is, is really important at first, okay? So it's a first step, it's not nothing. Um, then you, you need to practice. Practice makes perfect. That There is no perfect solution. Practice makes perfect. I gave you some tips to um, practice your English. Your English. <laughs> That's for me, sorry. Uh, tips to practice your French. Um, speak with people and don't be shy. And that's why I, te I told you um, earlier to, sometimes you can just speak Franklish, it's okay. Uh, I, I like to do that as well. Uh, when I don't remember a word in English, I just say it in French and sometimes people understand. Actually, sometimes the word is actually the same in English and in French, so don't hesitate. Um, even the small words, uh, yeah, even the small words, practice makes perfect. Oh, okay. Thank you, Gurango. I didn't know about uh, Duolingo, so thank you about that. Uh, I, I, get, I, con I get confused with, um, because Duolingo can also be a learning app, or is it a totally other name and I'm so confused. Sorry about that, and thank you for the tip. Um, Two apps, Duolingo or Tandem. If one learns vocabulary, how can the person practice pronouncing that vocabulary? Well, uh, on the internet, actually, even on Google Translate, you can, you, you know, you have the speaker icon actually just next to the word. It's to say how, it, how it's pronounced. And if you don't have that, if you have like a book dictionary, uh, on the dictionary, you always have phonetics. If you don't know phonetic alphabet, it's not that um, useful, helpful. Um, that's why the internet is easier because you have the speaker and the people is just, uh, a person is just uh, saying the word. So then you can hear it and voila. Uh, because yes, indeed, it's difficult to guess how to pronounce a word. So check on the internet or check the phonetics if, if you know the phonetic alphabet. Uh, je parle français, mais comment améliorer ma, gra ma grammaire? Uh, comment améliorer how to uh, practice your grammar, how to perfect your grammar? Um, there is a book, there is a collection of books, uh, La grammaire progressive en français. Uh, from the, the writer is Clé International. It's a really good book. You have three levels. So you have beginners, intermediate, and avancé. Avancé is like advanced. Uh, 
Um, check your level, check the inside. Actually, those books are not that expensive. You can find those uh, some in uh, occasion, occasion, so second hand. Um, you have the lesson, the grammar lesson, and then you have exercises to check if you understood the lesson. Those are really good, but only for grammar. So they are not helping you communicating, but they can really help you um, perfect your grammar, especially if you are already know a lot of stuff and it's just to add or to perfect, as you said. Uh, merci mille fois pour l'explication. Mais de rien. Uh, thank you. Clear. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, I think I'm done with my, um, with my tips. Actually, it was a bit... Uh, in a mess, so sorry about that. I hope uh, you, underst you understood me. I hope I was uh, clear. I gave you some tips, but I also answered your question, so I hope everything was okay. Um, I will just add something to conclude because it's almost the end. Um, I advise you not to, um, not to try to do everything in French, not to uh, be drowned in French because then you're going to be frustrating or you're just going to hate this language uh, because it can be really complicated. So find, um, in my tips, find something that you like. If you really like TV shows, find the one in French. If you really like watching movie, find, a, uh, find movies in French and look at them. We have quite a lot. Uh, if you like reading, read in French, try to read in French, but with step, step by step. Uh, and if you like going out, uh, meet French people, meet francophone people and practice with them. So my advice, my advice is not to try everything. Uh, just stay um, honest, uh, like stay with yourself. I don't know how to say that, uh, but like, if you like some, doing something in English, maybe you will like doing it in French as well. So le uh, learning French is not like changing yourself and be, and you don't have to read the classics. Like if you don't want to read Victor Hugo, if you don't like reading, don't read in French because you don't like reading. So you won't like reading in French either, neither. Yeah. Um, so find something you like and do it in French. And that's it. And take a class if you don't, because it's really helpful to learn a language. We are not here for nothing. We exist because we can be really helpful. And I think that's it for today. So um, thank you for watching me. Uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, merci pour vos questions. Thank you for your questions. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, de rien. Merci pour vos précieux conseils. De rien, euh, de rien. Ça me fait très plaisir. My pleasure. Uh, see you soon, I guess. Maybe for another live, another subject. Uh, bonne soirée, bon week-end, bon dimanche. Enjoy your Sunday and enjoy the déconfinement, the end of confinement for Monday. Good luck to all of you. Bon courage, bonne chance. Au revoir. <laughs>